okay, this is the last one. I changed again. And it's terrible you know, for something no one's going to see. But that's all right. I know. I'll see my grandkids. Hey, hey here's grandma. Here's grandma again. Um, I just want to, I'm going to make one more. And I, I'm preheating my oven. I am very hungry. I'm very tired. Um, I had a really busy day today. I talked about the interview in the first um, thing. Uh, first video. Also... Yeah, and it was so funny because I I think I think I've been under so much stress lately about you know go, you know trying to move and you know trying to change careers and I've been running back and forth to career um, coaches and life coaches and housing people and the VA and I still haven't got my travel pay from like two months ago and I just it's just like a lot of drama um, actually going on um, in my life. And so I've been like just crashing like eight o'clock at night, like just, just going to sleep just to, you know, make it go away till in the morning and then waking up at four o'clock in the morning. But it was so funny this morning. Um, I woke up like six thirty, some minutes to seven. Of course, I had to be somewhere at eleven thirty. So I'm like, OK, great. You know, so uh, the night that I had wanted to, um, you know, the one day I wanted to maybe wake up at four o'clock, four thirty in the morning, couldn't go back to sleep. Of course, it doesn't happen. I wake up at six. I didn't get out of bed till seven. That bed was good. You know how it gets when you get cuddled down there. But um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the new book because I think I said a little bit in the first video about how um, it. Um, um, I just I read it and it just it's the, all of all of it has to go. All of it has to go all the front part all, all of it has to go and like i said i'll probably look over in autumn the first book i'm gonna look over it um i'm gonna after i do um book 10 and i think i explained before these are not really chapters these are just i'm looking at robin hood that's why I, my face is like glazing away because i can see it in the reflection of my computer but um um I don't know. I thought because I had already written one book that this one was going to come easier. But the more I read it, I mean, how many times did the, the you know, the beginning of autumn change? So come on, you know, come on. This is going to, you know, this is going to run the gamut again. I, I don't want this one to take as long because I'm not going to have those big gaps, start and stop gaps that I had the last time. I'm not going to, um, I'm pretty much over that. Also, too, I think I have a little more idea about um, minimizing the action, but that's only that's something you have to go back and cut out. You you cannot just go, OK, you know, you have to cut a lot. You know, you have to write a lot and go back and cut it. You know, that's what you have to do. You know, you err on the side of a whole bunch. And then when you go back and look at it after you've taken some time away from it, you can also um, see that stop my cat. As usual, Zanzibar, stop. You're not hungry. Um, they have, um, see, you made me forget what I was talking about, you crazy cat. Oh, that you think that um, you have to write more. You have to write more and then you have to cut it down. And then as you go back and look, you'll see that, okay, this doesn't connect. This, this is not necessary. I don't need to say this. So I've said this again. And what I, I realized is that in some cases I gave a little narration and then the people, then the dialogue said it again. That's not necessary. You don't have to do that again. But uh, what I would talk about is the, um, um, how the male character in the second book, which I said, it, you know, it takes place in World War II, Zanzibar, stop. And um, he evolved from someone who was in the North African um, um, theater to um, a guy in the actual thick of things. And the way they meet, oh, I know what I put there. I put, um, begin with a knock on the door, good and bad. Uh, it, the book begins, the second book begins with a knock on the door, a violent knocks on the door, but you don't hear them. I had actually written bam, 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 or something like that. And I went back and I looked at it and I went, okay, no, <laughs> no, I just have her waking up. She wakes up in the middle of the night and, um, it's four o'clock, it's four twenty in the morning and she stopped says bar and she, um, um, she's awakened. 
early in the morning by this man she's met um, while she's at the spa. She really likes him. Um, how they met has changed because I changed it. How in um, the North African version, how, version, how they meet is um, her truck breaks down. She's um, um, like a madam in a brothel. And um, she's gone to an orphanage to, you know, feed some hungry kids or something she's doing like along those lines. She's in the resistance also too, but she, um, her truck breaks down and he's on like, I don't know, um, reconnaissance or something, you know, and he, he meets her in, in the desert and, you know, pretty much, you know, gives her a hard time. And then he comes to her um, establishment that evening and says, um, and she's like, well, look, I, you know, I don't work. I just, um, you know, kind of run the place. I'm kind of like the madam. And what she's done is she's taking her, taken her family, her family home and turned it into this like exclusive brothel. But of course, as we know, they're really spying. Because, you know, the, one of the line, one of my lines I really like is, you know, you can, um, after a man has a bath, a massage, and a strong cup of black, you know, a black coffee, and a, you know, and a massage by a beautiful brown girl that, you know, his tongue, he'll tell you anything, you know, that kind of thing. So they kind of run this kind of thing. And, you know, he's not stupid. He kind of knows what's going on. And he, he goes there and um, he says, um, this is the first version, you know, and he says, uh, you know, well, we can talk about it here or we can talk about it at my office. Of course, she goes, well, we can talk about it here. And it's a really nice um, scene, bathing scene. Um, when they leave each other, when they um, um, leave each other, I think, I can't remember because, you know, I wrote this version years and years and years ago. So I don't remember a lot of it, but I do think that they meet again. I really think that I believe they meet again in Canada or something, some kind of way. And she... Um, she has a baby. She tells him she's going to have a baby, but he um, has to leave to go, you know, the Germans are pulling out of North Africa. So he, um, he, um, you know, ends up leaving like that. That's how they end up. And I, and I think I had them meet up after the war. That's one thing. And he, and he realizes he has like a nine, 10 year old daughter. Cause he spent some time in, in a prison camp and that kind of thing. Now the second version, and if you, if you really want to know what I'm like, I kind of in reference to is read, um, how bigger was born in, in the pre, um, prologue of, um, native son. Some copies of it has it in it. So, you know, the abridged, unabridged copy has it in there. So read that and it shows how um, characters um, evolve. And you could tell that when I made that up, it was, I was at a naive stage. I was at a young stage and I made the mistake. Like I think I said before, I wanted, I want my audience to like him. You know, I wanted to say, well, hey, cause that's how it came about. Um, I wanted him, I wanted the, my characters to go, well, he doesn't know anything about that. And he doesn't know anything about that. And so, um, and I do think they meet again. So, cause that was the naivety. I wanted every, you want to like a lot of writers have this, um, they want to wrap everything up. You don't have to wrap everything up. You know, it doesn't have to be in a neat, uh, uh, pile. That's another thing I said about, um, writing up to your readers so that they can understand what's going on. But make their own, you know, make their own deductions about things. Use their brain. Work with, you know, work with their own, you know, use their own intellect and 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 make their own conclusions about things. And um, the second version of him, I guess, um, I think I said before, he was like a playboy, and he gets stationed in, you know, Paris because of, um, you know, nepotism, and he's um, and how they meet. He um, because I, I don't, I, I kind of like how they met, but okay, well, let me explain first. So how they meet is that he sets it up that these two, he sees her coming towards the club. He's looked at her, you know, he's, he's been watching her and she comes, um, um, oh, and also the reason why I had them in North Africa was that that was the only vehicle I could think of that how a German officer would meet a black woman. I couldn't, I couldn't, I didn't know about, you know, cabarets. I didn't know about why, well, you know, I knew about the occupation of Paris, but I 
I wasn't sophisticated enough to put that together to make that work. Um, um, so that was the vehicle that I knew that I used for that, that put place him in North Africa in that way you know, it made sense because you have to make sense. See, that's the problem with um, my writing, even from the, like the medieval stuff, all the, the, you know, like I was talking about the prequel, all that stuff, the, 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 um, um, problem, not problem, but you know, the situation is to have a black woman in this situation and it has to be believable. Okay. Um, Let's see. Okay. Yeah. So how they meet, he, he sets up some of his soldiers and say, go harass her, you know, and I'll come save the day. And that's how they meet. And, you know, and he's like, oh, she's like, oh, what can I do to, you know, whatever to help you. And he, he goes, oh, well, you can give me tickets to your show. See, and then, and also she in this one, in the second version is, um, is an entertainer once again. And see, and that's when I think I got the Josephine Baker influence, you know, in, in on it. And, um, she, um, she, she, she really doesn't like him. She really doesn't like him. And it's also the, um, you know, she had a Jewish lover who got um, transported East. And that's another reason why she doesn't really like him. And she has a daughter by her um, Jewish lover that she's hitting out at, at the orphanage. And, and, you know, it's all these different complications in her life. And then she, she, you know, and on top of that, she's in the resistance. So, you know, she didn't want this German officer um, um, sniffing down behind her, but, you know, of course he does. And he, he tells her after he goes to one of her shows and afterwards he tells her, he says, look, you know, get a, um, why don't you, um, let me take some photographs of you. You know, he wants to take nude photographs of her. She's like, no, 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 no. You know? And then he kind of blackmails her into doing it. And, and, um, their relationship is really complicated. I really, really like, you know, their relationship because you, they despise each other, you know, but they love each other. And, um, love is you know what's that you know conquers all you know i don't know how to say it in latin i forgot but um and how the end of their story is one of the best scenes i've written is how they say goodbye and how she knows that how she lets him know she's pregnant this is and they're, they're in a they're in a room with other people he's it's um after the war and he's getting ready to go back and um be tried and um, spend some time, as, as it ends up, he spends some time in a prison or war camp. And um, so they're in this room together with guards and people, secretaries and all these people standing around. And she has to tell him she's pregnant and she has to tell him she, he, she you know, loves him. And that's one of, if I must say so myself is some very, very good writing in, on, on my part because they, they get a, their point across while they're saying the most innocent things, you know? And um, what ends up happening is he's a little more dangerous than the, than the first guy. He's than, than the, um, the um, um, North Africa guy. He's a little more savvy. He knows a little bit more what's going on, you know, but he's, he's more playboy -y kind of, you know, you get the feeling, okay, he did some stuff somewhere. That's why they put him here. But you know, you don't really, you don't really go. And then, um, they meet again. He goes away and, um, uh, you know, he spends a couple of years in the prison of war camp. Um, and then he comes back to Paris to find his, his child, you know, like 20 years later, she's a grown woman. And that's a really good scene when he, he walks up, he, do, he doesn't know her name. He doesn't know what her name is. And, um, he calls, uh, Fraulein and his last name, I'm not going to say it. And she stops and turns around because of course her mother has, you know, so this is a good scene in that also when, um, ooh, there's my oven is our preheated. He, um, he doesn't know her name, so he calls her that, and it's uh, the um, scene where the black woman, the the you know, tells her daughter that her father wasn't well. He wasn't Italian. He wasn't English. He wasn't American, and he wasn't French. You know, and pretty much the daughter goes, um, "Mom, there's nothing left." You know, kind of thing, and that's when he tell she tells her when she's like 15, 16, something like that. And it's funny also seeing um, the daughter have some of his characteristics. You know, she's kind of you know, 
she says some kind of cruel things to some of her uh, classmates. One of her classmates calls her the daughter of a killer or murderer or something like that. And she goes, yeah, and I'm just like him. And she kind of really, you know, she gets that kind of scary stuff. She's a dance. She's a ballet dancer um, and a teacher. She's a teacher, actually. And he ends up being a teacher. So um, and then, of course, he goes and sees, you know, um, her again. And her name stayed the same. It, the My character, um, the female lead character, her name stays the same in all three versions the last version i realized that i had whisked out tons more stuff i had whisked out because i had like i said i had made the mistake of wanting um him to see the uh male the german officer seem rather harmless so he didn't know anything about anything that was going on and all the awful stuff that went on and stuff like that um oh and i oh so he actually they meet him and my female character they meet in a spa before the war starts and of course he's in civilian clothes she doesn't know you know and um they meet each other they're right at the point of okay the night's the night you know after this date the night's the night and then that's the the early morning of that day that's going to be their night you know because she'd been telling pushing him off pushing him off and the vehicle that I used was them writing letters. So for about two and a half years, kind of like, you know, there's a war and all this stuff is going on. They write letters back and forth and kind of fall in love like that. But of course, you know, she doesn't know, you know, what's going on with them. And that's kind of a um, theme through, uh, that was in the first book too, that my character in the first book doesn't really know everything about the man she's involved with. You know, she doesn't know everything about him and she finds out um, the reveal in the, in the um third version which is the third the version i'm gonna go with is he just walks in you know he just walks in she's at the club waiting for him and and he just walks in and you know she's already in love with this man and he's you know it's just and he's terrible and he goes to the actually to the east and does like really some bad things um also the irony of um what i put down good knock bad knock um the story begins with, like I said, at 4.20 in the morning, him um, knocking on the door, telling her he has to leave. I have to leave. They're still at the spa. He knocks on the door and he, has, he goes, um, I have to leave. I have to go back to Germany. It's end of September, 1939. Um, later on, we realize that who he is and why, you know, he, he, he left so early. And then a couple of weeks later, you know, um, Germany uh, invades Poland. And she, they write back and forth. Of course, he has a right to some you know address it isn't his address you know so he she does that and i'm not sure they meet again he gets arrested again um towards the end of the war and i'm kind of toying with something i'm not really sure I, i'm not really sure i'm thinking about it maybe but i'm pretty sure i don't think they meet again i don't because I left it rather ambiguous whether he was going to get hung at Nuremberg anyway, or if he dies, you know, trying to do, you know, it's too little too late, but he tries to do something. And also the um, theme of um, knocking, somebody knocking on the door. Um, the story began, but actually it was a play, actually, how it really started. Um, how it begins is, you know, with him knocking on her door at the resort at four, you know, 20 in the morning and telling her, hey, look, you know, I, I've got to get out of here. I've got to leave here. Write me by this address. And then um, I was looking at um, boy in the striped pajamas. I don't own it. Disclaimer. Um, the other day and um, when the Jews got to the concentration camp, the um, they wouldn't they opened the, the the box cars at night so that the Jews wouldn't really see that hey wait a minute it's three of them and it's like a hundred thousand of us so they made it and they put you know um spotlights on them they deliberately let them sit in there you know in the um cattle cars you know just just to wear them down just to absolutely wear them down so when they get out they were confused and so that's what I meant about the good knocking, bad knocking, because the good knocking is this romantic interlude starts with him knocking on the door, this, you know, this romantic letter writing, and then they reunite, you know, and they kind of, they're in love and they can't help it, who they are and all that garbage. And she finds out about him. And, um, and then the bad knocking is when the, um, I think that's how I'm going to start the camp, um, uh, part is that the knocking they would go and knock really loud you know and the capos the people that they had that the prisoners that were you know working well they 
for the German state were gonna, you know, be killed anyway, but they were trying to stay away alive a little longer. Um, and that's how I'm gonna start that part. So I'm gonna go, it looks like 20 minutes, so I don't wanna go too much longer and I'm pretty tired. So I'll talk to you guys later.